Tonight, new nicotine. Is the e-cigarette really the answer to Britain's fatal attraction to smoking? That, to me, is very, very satisfying. Without coughing and spluttering and God knows what. But I enjoy it, so I'll continue, hopefully. What do we know about them? And are they really safe? A lot of the toxins which are consumed through e-cigarettes have not been adequately researched. Good evening and welcome to The Tonight programme. If giving up smoking wasn't your New Year's resolution, it's likely you know someone who is trying to kick the habit. Electronic cigarettes have seen phenomenal growth with over a million people in the UK now using them. But are they better for you than tobacco? What do they contain? And why are some countries banning them? Chris Choi investigates. You stay away and all I do is wonder why the hell I wait for you. Britain's had a long-standing love affair with tobacco. I absolutely loved my ciggies. This truly fatal attraction has cost 100,000 lives a year. And mutations are how cancer starts. We've spent millions on smoking and a fortune trying to give up. Now, some experts believe we have our greatest chance yet to beat the addiction. We have an opportunity to end the tobacco epidemic. Global sales of e-cigarettes are forecast to grow to four billion pounds this year. Nicotine, it's my high, but I enjoy it. But do we really know enough about their safety? Our big concern is that currently they're not regulated. We found lingering doubts from major health organisations. A lot of the toxins which are consumed through e-cigarettes have not been you know, adequately researched and evidence that even those that make e-cigarettes have concerns. Already in Britain there are hundreds of different types. Experts reckon around 1.3 million people are using them. But e-cigs have developed so rapidly it's been hard to keep up. So let's start with a simple question. How do they work? The majority of e-cigarettes have three components. A battery, sometimes rechargeable, an element which heats up the vapour, and a cartridge, usually containing nicotine-based fluid. Crucially, there is no tobacco. And what the user inhales does not contain the 4,000 chemicals found in a traditional cigarette. The e-cig was born here, in China. This is Sha Jing in the south. 80% of worldwide e-cigs are produced here. We got access to film in one of the biggest factories, where this production line employs a thousand people. Since we established our company in 2009, we have expanded by nearly 10 times every year. Back then, our factory was only 80 square meters, with just 10 staff producing a few hundred thousand electronic cigarettes. In 2012, we produced and sold more than 10 million electronic cigarettes. Yet these e-cigarette manufacturers have their own concerns. Currently, there's no industry standard in the UK or any other European country. There's a lot to be done. Currently, many e-cigarettes are made with similar low quality. These are very serious problems. Back in Britain, those concerns aren't holding back a phenomenal take-up. The e-cig has entered our national lifestyle. I see people with them everywhere now. They're in every normal shop. You get them in Tesco, you get them in corner shops. They're 
better for your health and they, they don't smell as bad as normal cigarettes. I think they're a good thing. They're better than cigarettes. Sometimes it looks a bit strange to see an e-cig in, in a bar. Uh, just because it's still quite new, but uh, but you get used to it. It's a bit like a revolution of smoking. Like I think it's going to be a new way of, of young people mainly like, staying away from the normal tobacco cigarettes. For smokers who are used to shelling out on cigarettes, they're cheaper too. I've spent two ninety nine on this today. A pack of um, tobacco is what four pounds now. So yeah, and this will last me probably a month. I've come to Newcastle, traditionally a smoking city. In the 1940s, Wills opened a cigarette factory here. By 2007, almost a third of the population were lighting up. But now, something is changing. Your starter kit will come with a bottle of liquid. I always let you try a few and see which one you prefer. This e-cig shop opened six months ago. Business is brisk. The whole idea of switching to electric cigarettes is to stop smoking completely. Lee Nesbitt is a new kind of nicotine salesman. With e-cigs, a vast range of flavourings can be mixed with the active ingredients. Take a couple of puffs, feel free. <laughs> it's very yeah. similar to smoking a cigarette. Yeah. Shops like Lee's are popping up all over the country, yet research and regulation has failed to keep up. The NHS says that they still don't know the long-term effects of e-cigs on the body and that so far there is no proof that they help people quit smoking. Just look at the sign here. You're saying that the health benefits of these are the same as quitting smoking. But you can't say that, can you? Because we haven't got the long-term trials to make that kind of statement. Well, I mean, that's basically based from the three or 400 customers that I speak to a week who give me feedback. But that's not proper long-term clinical trials, which is what we really need in order to make those kind of health claims, surely. Well, I would agree that clinical trials are definitely needed, but the feedback that I get from customers that have switched to electric cigarettes is that within a month or two, the sense of smell comes back, the sense of taste comes back. But you're talking about just a couple of hundred people there. Well, I, I, th and I think... And it's in your interest to make these claims, so, well, you know, you're not, you're not a, a kind of clinical yeah, laboratory. I, I agree, I agree, and as I've already said, I think the sooner that tests are in place so that everybody knows the full story with regards to electric cigarettes, I think the sooner that happens, the better. This expert from Cancer Research UK agrees that more clinical studies into e-cigarettes are needed. But he says that should not stop smokers switching to them. While you get people say, we don't know yet whether e-cigarettes are safe, the answer is we know what the ingredients are that are within them, and we know that those are, nothing is perfectly safe, but compared with a cigarette, they're 100 times uh, safer, if not more. Well, look, we're just getting ready to go live we are. on something that's... Pretty unique. I'm on set at one of Britain's most unusual TV stations. Well, hello. Good evening, one and all. We're live on a channel entirely dedicated to e-cigarettes. Welcome to the show. Thank you. I'm liking it so far. When you go electronic, it's known as vaping, not smoking. I smoked through two pregnancies because uh, I couldn't give it up because the side effects of stopping smoking for me were just too crippling, um, I would never have stopped. It's as simple as that. The devices they celebrate here work on the same principle as basic e-cigs, but they're modified with long-life batteries and controls that vary the nicotine. And a lot of people in the general audience seeing this will be thinking, what on earth is that arsenal of hardware on your desk? What is it? They are uh, Generation 2 and Generation 3 versions, yes. They're, they're, they don't look like uh, a cigarette. They don't resemble a cigarette in any way, shape or form. And they work better. They are, as you can see by the very plethora of them there, it's a customizable experience. And that's the beauty of it. Many of Dave's viewers say e-cigs help them stop smoking, so there's fury here that UK officials won't allow them to be advertised as a quitting aid. And there's anger that an increasing number of venues won't allow e-cigs. Till next time, night-night. Bye-bye.
Our research shows that across a large part of leisure, retail and transport, electronic cigarettes have been stubbed out. <laughs> I found a pub that does allow e-cigs. Hello. Hello. One of the regulars tells me he has terminal cancer. To quit smoking, he's using an electronic alternative. That, to me, is very, very satisfying. Without coughing and spluttering and God knows what. But I enjoy it. Um, so I'll continue, hopefully. And I like nicotine. It's my high. I used to have angina attacks quite regularly. Uh, since I've been vaping, I very, very rarely have an angina attack now. I've, I've never used my spray. I find it exceptionally brilliant, you know. But Glynis Miller believes there are too many unanswered questions about e-cigs. It was my 39th wedding anniversary, the day that Terry died. Her husband, Terry, a heavy smoker who had started in his teens, had switched to e-cigs. I was 16 when we first met. He wasn't doing anything for anybody kind of person, you know. He was a family man, loved especially his grandchildren. 30 times a day and for eight months, Terry inhaled what his doctor referred to as oil blended with concentrated nicotine, a reference to the viscous fluid found in e-cigs. In 2010, he was admitted to Queen Elizabeth Hospital in Gateshead. He was breathless, coughing. Five weeks later, he died. The last words he actually spoke to me was, I don't know what I would do without you. Terry's consultant believes an unusual type of pneumonia contributed to his death. Glynis thinks e-cigs may have played a part. Something called lipoid pneumonia, which is caused by the oil on the lungs, which is a very, apparently, I'm not really sure about this, apparently it's a disease that used to occur a lot of years ago during... Um, when we had a lot of heavy industry, where people were inhaling oil. Um, so it was quite a, a rare thing, I think, I believe. But it's, it's important that we point out that nothing's been proven. Oh, that, no, that, nothing's it's, been it's proven. It's a theory, mm -hmm. you think it's a possibility, but there's, there's been no research and we can't say no, definitively. No. no, definitely not. But at the same time, they cannot say it wasn't. The coroner recorded an open verdict. Terry's consultant shared his report with us. He concedes that Terry's old smoking habit could have done the damage, but he has his suspicions of a link between e-cigs and his patient's lung disease. Terry's death is the only one we came across where a consultant has such concerns, but the chest physician is adamant further research is needed. Who can tell me how that oil got into Terry's lungs? If they can give me an answer to that and say that it definitely wasn't that cigarette that put that oil in my husband's lungs, then I'll say fair enough. And shortfalls in e-cig research concern many countries. The World Health Organization researched 85 nations and has given us its new, unpublished findings. More than a third of the countries, including Brazil, Uruguay and Singapore have a ban on e-cigs. Others, such as the Czech Republic and Turkey, have restricted their use in public spaces. Almost 40% won't allow sales to children, and only 15% of the 85 nations have conducted scientific research into the products. Now the World Health Organization says we should not use them until we know more about their safety. The science around the safety of e-cigarettes has not been demonstrated. We, we still need more research to know and understand what sort of impact on health and uh, people around uh, these e-cigarettes are having. Uh, we know that, uh, for example, that, um, that a lot of the toxins which are consumed through e-cigarettes have not been you know, adequately researched. <laughs> Such strong concerns from a World Health Group haven't stopped giant tobacco firms wading in. Hi, Chris. Welcome to BAT in Southampton. Please, Thank come you. this way. Thank you. Thank you very much for letting us come and film today. For them, there's the chance of a lucrative new profit stream. British-American tobacco allowed us behind the scenes. 
some people feel uncomfortable that the very companies that created the smoking problem will now profit from an alleged solution. Well, we've made a pretty long-term commitment for a few years now to the world of tobacco harm reduction and to try and have a journey whereby we can offer more harm-reduced products to consumers. So this is a first step, a first very tangible step. We think over the long term there are very, very genuine and potentially sizable commercial opportunities. Big profits. There'll be commercial opportunities which will reward our shareholders. British American Tobacco conduct quality checks, but there's no agreement on an international standard for testing e-cigs. Where we would agree is that e-cigarettes are an emerging category. There is, uh, we agree that there needs to be more long-term studies of the use of e-cigarettes. But However, you're selling them already. We believe that as they are today, and we believe there are various parts of the scientific community who would agree with us, they provide a substantially safer alternative to smoking a traditional cigarette. It all sounds a bit vague. The products are already on the market and you're saying we don't really know enough about them. Well, I go back to what the Medicinal and Healthcare Regulatory Authority said, and that is that it's the uh, tobacco smoke that has links with serious illness in a traditional cigarette. Big firms now entering the e-cig business bring big advertising budgets, social situations, for everything friends glossy production techniques and emotional triggers. Friends don't let friends smoke. Humour and family settings are being used in e-cig advertising to reach smokers. So, what have I missed? But officials are yet to catch up with rapid developments in this industry. The UK's Advertising Standards Authority is still consulting on its approach, leaving some parents like Miriam Richards feeling things are getting out of control. I was driving the children to school one morning, uh, I had four children in my car and an advert for electronic cigarettes came on the radio. I think that we need to be extremely careful about um, promoting any kind of cigarettes or any kind of smoking at times when children are likely to see or hear those adverts. E-cigarettes are undergoing a massive marketing push. Glamour, sex appeal and sports sponsorship are all part of the marketing weaponry being used within the industry. Let's see what you make of it. There are no restrictions on sales. Even children can buy them, although packets often warn against that. And this expert in tobacco marketing says it's all creating risks. After 910 complaints, the Advertising Standards Authority has started a formal investigation into this ad for VIP. It was too sexual, um, very, very blatant sexual references. Um, and, you know, how are the audience going to respond to that? Particularly a young audience. I'm thinking of a 15-year-old boy looking at that. He, he would just love to accept that woman's invitation, you bet. And, and is he going to accept that invitation in a, a safe, public healthy sort of way and, and, and vape? And even then, is he being brought into the market rather than switching? Or is he going to interpret it as, a, as an allusion to, to real cigarettes, the, the, the real McCoy, which is uh, the great danger here? Professor Hastings thinks it's history repeating itself. This sort of imagery um, has been used down the eons to, to promote real tobacco, of course. VIP told this programme we take our responsibilities extremely seriously. Throughout the production process, we work to ensure full compliance with all codes of practice and our commercials only appeared after the watershed. E-cigs are even starting to appear in pop videos. Michael Ryan is group chairman of Britain's biggest e-cig firm. It's his brand, E-Lite, right at the centre of that high-profile music video. The Lily Allen video in, uh, specifically, we identified an artist whose fan base ranges from eight, 18 to 40 predominantly. The, uh, the, the video itself was an over-18s video. It wasn't, it, it, it wasn't broadcast to, uh, to any medium where youth could access it. Yeah, but we're living in an internet era, it goes everywhere, doesn't it? The, well, we, are look, we again are looking to address our, our adult smoking audience. Adult smokers are into music, adult smokers are into sports. That is, where, that is the, the type of events that they go to, that's where we can engage with them.
A generation of children has never seen cigarettes advertised. E-cigs are changing that. Well, here we are in a place where your e-cigarettes are being marketed. Um, isn't part of the problem in the way that they're being marketed it, that it's reintroducing the, the whole concept of smoking? You even use the word in your poster out there, smoking. Well, what we are trying to do is address the smoking community and get across the fact that there is now a product which they can choose. Again, it's an alternative to what they do at the moment. And part of that is, is creating the appeal. We, we will look to do that in every responsible manner that we can see fit. Once again, nicotine is spread across Britain's billboards. For the group representing our doctors, it's all gone too far, too fast. What we do know from uh, research, especially coming from the US, is that there is a growing knowledge of e-cigarettes amongst uh, high school students there, and in the same way that uh, teenage children here are very aware of them. Whilst the most recent UK studies have suggested that very few uh, teenagers have um, tried it, uh, obviously with the way that they are being aggressively marketed and the way that marketing is targeting uh, the younger age groups, that has got to be a, a cause for concern. The Advertising Standards Authority told us it hasn't seen evidence of or received complaints about e-cigs being aggressively marketed at young people. For years, the EU has been debating how e-cigs should be policed. Now, they're about to issue new regulations. It's expected that TV ads will be banned and the strength of electronic cigarettes will be restricted. Users are protesting that it will interfere with the growth of this alternative to smoking. This is about me standing up and saying, actually, I want something that I know is not harming me. This, for me, is a solution. And it's about time that people started listening. In time, on most packs, there'll be warnings like these, along with ingredient lists and details per dose. It's expected underage sales will be outlawed. To escape these rules, an e-cig brand would have to become licensed as a medicine. So far, none have done so. I think it will go some ways to uh, easing the concern about the, the device, especially where it is being used by a smoker as a safer alternative to tobacco. It's thought the new rules will be agreed by the EU within weeks. The UK then has two years to implement them. What we would want is that regulation to start earlier uh, and that um, that to start as soon as possible rather than waiting till 2016. Although the health effects are yet to be determined, it looks like e-cigs are here to stay. It's even been predicted they could overtake smoking sales by 2040. So could they really be the answer to Britain's fatal attraction to smoking? In the whole of my career, over more than 30 years working in the field of tobacco research, the best we've been able to achieve in terms of getting smoking prevalence down is around 1% a year. Now, with electronic cigarettes, we have an opportunity to end the tobacco epidemic in my lifetime. This is something that I never thought I would see. Next month, the European Parliament will finalise the first regulations specific to e-cigarettes. In the meantime, whilst doubts remain, it's clear e-cigs have become an attractive alternative to tobacco. Now, if you'd like more information on tonight's programme, please visit our website at itv.com slash tonight. In the meantime, good evening and thanks for watching. Coming up next week, to diet or not to diet? Jonathan Maitland asks why so many of us struggle to get slim. I'm fed up because I'm fat, and then because you're fat, you eat more because you're fed up. And I don't want to be in that loop anymore. Sharon, Tracy and Dorian all have a date tonight, but is love in the air, birds of a feather at 8.30. Next though, it's back to Emmerdale and Ali realises how hard it is to defend her sister. Thank you.